All right, so I mentioned, I believe on Thursday that we will be starting a new chapter today. So today you will be taking notes on general medical conditions and how they actually are related to those who play sports. So this is something that is just as important as knowing how to treat um, like musculoskeletal injuries. If anything, this is more important than any of those because oftentimes people who have general medical conditions like diabetes, um, asthma, things like that, those could be things that could potentially kill the person. So this is another really important thing that I want you guys to focus on. It's a thing that I always am trying to be aware of as an athletic trainer, um, because yeah, definitely don't want any of my athletes to get sick um, or have risk of potential death. So the biggest thing that you need to be aware of if you do plan on working in sports medicine, especially if you're working in as an athletic trainer, is just making sure that you're aware of what athletes have pre, this should say pre-existing um, conditions. So not pre exiting pre-existing illnesses or conditions. This is why there are physicals given at the beginning of the sports season or yeah, just before you are able to participate in sports because they're trying to screen to see whether or not you have um, anything that could potentially cause death, which sounds very morbid, but again, they're trying to reduce the risk of liability on them as a school in a school district. Um, and then also making sure that you're obviously not having athletes that potentially could, um, yeah, pass away. So that's just, it's really important to understand that. Um, I, I have in the past had students who had um, like pre-existing illnesses such as asthma. So just making sure that I'm aware of who those students are, making sure that they're carrying their inhaler with them. Um, and then also making sure too with like students with diabetes, which we'll talk about, um, especially type one diabetes, just making sure that they have their insulin with them. They're making sure that they're monitoring their blood sugar um, and so forth. All right, so we'll talk about diabetes mellitus right now. So diabetes mellitus can affect anyone. Um, you have two different types. You have type one, which is the autoimmune um, disorder that typically is um, discovered as when you're a juvenile. So it's often called juvenile diabetes. So as a child, you're usually, um, they'll discover that you have this condition. Or if you are an adult, sometimes they can discover it, but it's usually when you're younger, um, you'll find out. So type one diabetes is a big one. Type two, not so much affecting athletes. Type two diabetes remember is due to lifestyle. So often it's people that are overweight, obese, um, that sort of thing, which those are typically not going to be people that are athletes. So you won't generally deal with them. All right. So it is important. Like I said, you need to know those pre-existing illnesses of your athletes ahead of time. And then it says prepare an emergency action plan. So what this means is just making sure that you know who are the kids that have type one diabetes. Um, at our school right now, I believe I only have one athlete with type one diabetes, um, but at other schools, I've had it where there was two. So it's just important to make sure that you know who those kids are. Um, I try to keep like a Gatorade bar, um, in my training room. That way, if anyone does go into a diabetic, um, insulin shock, so meaning that their blood sugar has dropped, that I have something to give to them to bring their blood sugar up. So I believe we briefly talked about this in medical careers. Um, but diabetes, if their blood sugar goes too high, they can go into a coma. Um, and then if their blood sugar drops too low, they can also go into a coma. But the low is where you have the more risk um, because they can potentially die. So when you're high, that's not good either. But when you're low, it's really bad. So um, just making sure that you're prepared too, but they need to be prepared. And then making sure that if they are experiencing um like a sugar low that the coaches are aware that they can take breaks when they need to, if they need to, you know, give themselves a carbohydrate, carbohydrate rich snack that they're able to do that as well. All right. So just immediate treatment. If somebody goes into a diabetic coma due to their blood sugar being too high, you want to make sure that you're contacting EMS immediately. So um, I've mentioned to you guys, if somebody's unresponsive, that's abnormal. Nobody should be unresponsive. If you're shaking someone, um, asking them, are you okay? Are you awake? That sort of thing. And they're not giving you a response. That's not normal. So anytime that happens, you want to call 911, especially if you know they're a person that does have a pre-existing condition. Um, and then always making sure that you're monitoring vital signs. So I have a um, blood pressure cup that I use that just basically... We'll take the blood pressure reading and then it, you can keep redoing it every few minutes. That way you're 
able to re recognize whether or not their blood pressure has changed, um, their pulse rate has changed, those sorts of things, because those are big indications as to whether or not um, symptoms are getting worse or the conditions getting worse. Um, so it's just important to make sure that you have instructions um, when dealing with an athlete who has diabetes. So again, it's not as common, but it does happen. There are kids who are type one diabetic. So it's just extremely important for the athletic trainer to be aware of this, making sure that there's communication with the coaches out as well, because they are going to be the first people that most likely are going to deal with the athlete if they do go into diabetic coma or insulin shock. Um, and they're going to be the ones that are going to then probably contact the athletic trainer. So it's just important for them to know what to do. Um, obviously you need to be aware of it. And then just making sure too that you're communicating with um, the athlete as well so that they're also doing things to prevent them going into a blood sugar high or a blood sugar low. Um, and then if an athlete does participate in intense exercise, that can actually um, affect their blood sugar significantly. So I obviously don't have type 1 diabetes. I have um, experience though with people who have type 1 diabetes and they can go from feeling okay to feeling really bad um, and their blood sugar dropping really fast. So it's just important to make sure that you are aware of this. Um, intense exercise is going to deplete their blood sugar levels. It's kind of the same thing that happens when you exercise, why it's important after you exercise to actually consume something that's high in sugar or carbohydrates because your body uses that as your first source of energy. So the same thing happens with someone who's diabetic. Um, they need that blood sugar to be functioning correctly. And so if their blood sugar drops too low, um, which would be hypoglycemia, then they could go into that insulin shock where that can be dangerous. That's a 911 emergency um, because yeah, they could potentially die. Their organs basically just start to shut down. Um, some symptoms of someone who is suffering from hypoglycemia would be that they have a headache, they feel nauseous, they feel weak. Um, sometimes they have like loss of motor coordination. They start to sweat, so they kind of look clammy. Um, they often will have like anxiety, so their heart will be racing. Um, I kind of just tell, you know, my students that imagine when you haven't eaten something in a really long time, you probably will have like a headache. You might feel a little nauseous um, and that's because your blood sugar has dropped. But for someone who has a normal functioning pancreas, um, when your blood sugar drops, yes, you feel sick, you don't feel great, but imagine that times 10. That's what someone who has type one diabetes and then they go, or just diabetes in general, when their blood sugar drops. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then just making sure too, that if their blood sugar does go low, you're providing them with something that's high in carbohydrates. You want to make sure you are not administering insulin. Insulin is what brings blood sugar down. So if their blood sugar is already low, you do not want to give them insulin because that can kill them. So you're only, you should never administer insulin. Um, only the, the patient or athlete should be administering it. Um, but just keep that in mind. Insulin, you shouldn't be injecting anything with anyone. I would never inject it, any type of medication into an athlete. But yeah, just insulin is not good. You want to make sure that they're able to consume something. Um, if they are unconscious, obviously you cannot give them any type of food because they're not able to swallow. So just calling 911 if that were the case, because again, you don't want them to go into a coma and then you also don't want to um, cause death. Um, and then just in general, most people who are diabetic do carry sugar with them at times. So um, like I said, I have known people in the past that have type one diabetes. Some of them will carry what are called glucose tablets. And you can, you can find these at like any pharmacy. They're usually by the um, counter, but they look like giant sweet tarts. Um, and essentially it's kind of what they are. They're just like pure sugar. And so for someone who's diabetic, if their blood sugar is low, they can consume maybe two of those. And then within probably about five to 10 minutes, they'll start to feel a little bit better. Um, and their blood sugar, they will recheck and it should start to increase. Um, so that would be one thing. I know there are people that choose to drink like Gatorade is high in carbohydrates. That would be another good thing. Just anything you're looking for, anything that has a decent amount of sugar. So something that's probably over like 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates. Um, and then again, just making sure that you are calling 911 if you see that the person's condition doesn't improve or it gets worse. And then if they are unconscious, again, you're calling 911 as well. All right, the other thing we'll talk about today is asthma. So I'm sure I always ask students when I see you guys like in the classroom teaching, I always ask who in here has asthma because it's very common. 
Um, but it's also something that there's varying degrees of it. Some people will have asthma where it is extremely severe. Um, they're on several medications to monitor it. Monitor it. There are some people that only get asthma when they exercise. There are some people that only get asthma when um, they're around some type of allergen. So again, it's just important to understand who are those people that have asthma? What is their sensitivity to it? Um, or what are their sensitivities? And then just, again, trying to do things um, to prevent it from getting um, worse or their condition to occur. So a big part of just being an athletic trainer is preventative stuff. So you're trying to screen people for these conditions and then making sure that you are aware of what their conditions are and how you can treat it. And then making sure too, that they are responsible for um, carrying their medication that they need. So again, varying degrees of it. There are various reasons why some people might have asthma. Again, you can have airborne irritants like allergies. Um, it could be things like peanuts might, you know, cause it or could too just be that maybe they just always have it. <clears throat> doesn't matter what the environment is like. Um, and then it could also be where they have it just like I said, with exercise, which is exercise induced asthma. And then just a little brief background, if you forget. So this is just what a normal airway looks like. Um, someone who's asthmatic, they have vasoconstriction. Um, so basically it starts to narrow. And then obviously if you have that narrowing, you're not getting um, and bronchospasm, if you remember from the respiratory system. So they're not getting that oxygen that they need. Um, and then if your body doesn't have oxygen, then that can lead to death. So just making sure that you are aware of what this condition is. Um, so some symptoms of asthma would be wheezing. Um, they might have shortness of breath. They might also be coughing. Um, coughing is usually like a better sign because then that means that they're actually able to like have a bigger breath, I guess. Um, but also just making sure that the, you know that those are symptoms. Um, and like I mentioned, some people have asthma due to an increase in activity. Some people have it due to like all allergic reactions. So maybe there's pollen outside or maybe peanut exposure, whatever it is, that, that would be more so the food allergies. Some are allergic to animals, um, like cats, things like that. And I'm not going to click on this, but <clears throat> your breathing sounds are important. So if you remember going back to respiratory system, your breasts should be very um, calm and they should pretty much sound the same. They shouldn't be where you're <gasps> or you're not making sound, which would be apnea, all of that. Those would be life threatening sounds. The wheezy, not so much, but the, the apnea. Um, and then if your athlete is experiencing symptoms, you want them to sit down, try to elevate their arms. Um, and this is supported by a pillow on the table. So that would be if you had a table. Um, I've had students, uh, I had a student that had a severe asthma attack a couple of years ago. She was actually conditioning for basketball and was running the track. Um, and she didn't have her inhal inhaler that day. And so um, she was, yeah, having like periods of where she was wheezing, but then she wasn't able to catch her breath. So that sort of thing. So I definitely called 911 because anytime anyone's having any respiratory distress, you don't want to delay care. Um, so what I did was I had her sit down um, and then I just had her kind of like wrap her hands around her knees, um, if you can imagine that. And then I carry my own inhaler, not my personal inhaler, but I have an inhaler in case I have athletes um, that have asthma. And so I just suggested that she try to use it, um, which she was able to, if she was unable to actually, um, I guess, give herself a dose with the inhaler, then um, that would definitely be another reason to call 911. So she was able to, but it wasn't getting better. It wasn't improving. So that's where I called 911. Um, and then if they're able to try to calm them down, a lot of times people who are having asthma attack will then also have anxiety um, and anxiety will then cause your respirations to be more rapid. So you're just trying to do everything you can to get them to breathe um, as calm and controlled as possible. Um, and then if your athlete is experiencing um, symptoms, you just want to um, make sure that the inhaler that they are using is for them. Um, and then also making sure that they need to have that inhaler with them whenever they are practicing or participating in sports. All right, we will stop there for today. What's this? I don't know what's happening.